His eggplant comes to life, but only wants to reproduce. Two outcasts tried to survive their senior year, only for a mysterious occurrence to turn their lives upside down. What is Charlie it? stands on the diving board while his schoolmates urge him to jump. This reminds him of his childhood trauma, where his pants were pulled down while he was at the pool. Even now, the people around him make fun of his manhood, pushing him to jump into the water. When he Damn. does, he finds brief silence underwater. However, as soon as he surfaces, he still gets mocked by everyone, including the popular Why? jock Constantine and his friends Ziggy and Busty. He oh my god, look at Busty, bro. Everyone, including the popular jock Constantine and his friends Ziggy and Busty. Your name is Busty, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. That just means you're breedable. Don't talk to me. Hey, I'm live on Twitch every single Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Link is in the description. I better see you there. He rushes to the locker room, but his bullies arrive, so he hides in a cubicle. Because of this, Charlie overhears that the hottest girl in school is ignoring Constantine, and Ziggy and Basti are in a relationship while keeping a manly facade in front of others. After class, Paula, Charlie's best friend- What the hell is this? <laughs> this is a hilarious looking car. Is this a buggy? The old school punch buggy? This thing looks hilarious. Picks him up, and they happily greet each other as they speak in code. Upon arriving home, his best friend advises him not to check his phone. Then, he witnesses how his parents, Rudy and Sabine, argue about the expired yogurt the father hoarded despite being lactose intolerant. On the other hand, what? Paula returns home, disregarding her younger sister Phoebe and her mom, who speak about how the older sister is more like her father who passed away. Moments later, Paula wins a video game she is playing, and a league member sends her an inappropriate picture which deeply upsets her. That what game was she playing? A league member? Don't tell me she, she was playing League of Legends and she got sent a dangling pic. That's so light, y'all league players, man. At night, she hangs out with Charlie on the rooftop, venting her frustration over how she's treated for being a woman. She want want. He then comforts her friend about being bullied for an incident years ago. In the end, they appreciate having each other. Suddenly, Aww. lightning strikes them, and they miraculously survive. The following day, Charlie gets awakened by the continuous babbling of an unfamiliar voice, they encouraging him bodies? to explore his worldly urges. He what? soon notices his manhood's enthusiastic greeting and panics. But before he can react, what? Rudy barges into the room, catching him chatting with Willie, his member. He rushes to the bathroom to calm it down as his parents keep popping up, depriving him of privacy. Soon, Paula comes to pick him what? up, but the freaked out Charlie rushes away in his bike to avoid her as Willie can't be controlled despite its explanation that only the man can hear its voice. Oh, so it's really talking. So, guys, imagine y'all tip just moving up and out of my fist. <laughs> y'all tip just opening and <laughs> He ends up crashing his bike in his hurry, so he later hands it over to his father who works at the school as a janitor. Then, Charlie's word slows down as he sees Marlene, the hottest girl in school, while that Willie bad, pushes baby. him to speak with her. In class, Director Voigt firmly reminds them about Bad the final with exam. a tan. As Willie rambles about worldly pleasures, the stressed Charlie excuses himself to the bathroom thinking that Willie will shut up if satisfied. His dingling's controlling him so much that he's busting. He's busting in the bathroom. Have y'all ever got that desperate? That's next level desperation. At that point, you have a problem. Unfortunately, after the brief silence, it resumes rambling. Afterward, Charlie faces another challenge as he stands as a choir member in front of the senior class and the delegation from their partner school. Contrary to the owner, Willie becomes overly enthusiastic, being at the center of attention. Mr. Pendergast commences the program as the conductor and soon signals Charlie to step forward for his solo part. However, oh, Willie no. notices a beautiful exchange student from the delegation, no. Francoise, and a tent appears in his pants. He got hard on stage. I don't know if I can watch this. I don't know if I can watch that. Oh, that's embarrassing. He got hard on stage. It's poking. It's poking out. Yo, his dingling setting him up. L dingle, bro. L dingle. It's raps. And look at the face he was making when, when it started poking out. Exchange student? That lady looked like she like 27 plus. That is not a student. Exchange student from the delegation, Francoise. And a tent. 
Look at him, bro. It's poking out and he looks like that. He is nutting. <laughs> appears in his pants, freaking Charlie out. The audience starts to notice while some record him, making the shame student hurry to hide backstage, unaware that his mic is on and his part of the conversation with Willie is being broadcasted. <laughs> I could not watch this in theaters. I could not. I could not. My single hand embarrassment is going crazy right now. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. In the hall. At home, Charlie continues wallowing in embarrassment while Paula attempts to show him the video Marlene posted from the choir event, which is now viral. He refuses to see it, so Paula massages his shoulders to Willie's satisfaction. She faces her best friend and asks if he wants to sleep together. Willie happily agrees, but Charlie declines. Embarrassed, Paula excuses herself to the bathroom as Willie argues with his owner for missing a perfect opportunity. Simultaneously, Paula begins to argue with her privates, who about her earlier mortifying interaction with her best friend. She returns to Charlie's room and frantically retrieves her things before leaving. Afterward, Willie criticizes his owner, but Charlie warns his member to stop talking about his best friend if he wants a deal with him. He then proposes to steer off Paula and let him pass his final exam peacefully. Then he will do what Willie wants, to which okay. the member agrees. The following day, Charlie notices that Rudy isn't around while his mom looks for men on an online dating app. Ah, he rushes ah. to school to speak with his dad, but when he tells him about his mom, Rudy explains that Sabine demands time alone. The father nonchalantly sips his coffee, making the son more frustrated, pushing his father to do something to win his mom back. Charlie leaves his dad and faces a massive shock as schoolmates swarm around him due to- I wouldn't go back to school. You could not force me to go back to school. I am a homeschool from that day. I'm not showing my face in public for at least, at least two, three months. At least. At least, ain't no way, bro. To his viral video, the student embraces his newfound popularity, unaware that he catches Marlene's attention, especially after seeing Constantine's dislike toward him. Paula spots him amongst the crowd and initiates to discuss their mortifying interaction, but Charlie dismisses her as people snap pictures with him. Then he bumps into Francoise, who asks him to help her familiarize herself with the place. As Willie, that is a grown woman. Are they? Aren't they in high school? Comes more excited. Charlie declines, but soon transitions to a smooth invitation to spend time with a lady. Meanwhile, Paula and Hoo-Ha watch them bitterly. She locks herself in the bathroom, and her strange companion brings up her only experience with men during her vacation two years ago. Paula met a hot guy at a beach, but as he made his move on- How old are y'all? She suddenly sobbed as she remembered her deceased father. The guy- What? What? What is going on, bro? I insulted her hoo-ha, leaving her heartbroken and uncertain of her femininity. As the memory what? ends, hoo-ha encourages Paula to channel her femininity and study her body. Soon, the son finds himself shopping for intimate apparel with his mom. Sabine opens up about her desire to focus on herself now after devoting her time to Rudy and Charlie. Then, she receives a message from the dating app and mistakenly interprets the eggplant emoji as an invitation to cook together. Charlie struggles to explain its meaning while Willie laughs. Afterward, Paula visits an adult boutique, and Hoo-Ha excitedly begs her to try out black lingerie. The lady fits the apparel but needs to find a bigger size. The shop assistant okay, is Okay, I no cannot tell these are college students or not. I'm very confused. All right, Chad, are these college students or are these high schoolers? I cannot tell. I, I literally have no clue, bro. Where to be found, so she awkwardly heads out and accidentally bumps into him. Unbeknownst to her, Marlene's cronies Leonie and Sarah spot her in the store, making them jump to conclusions. Late that night, the best friends meet. Has to be college. I know it's just like the school system looks like a high school. That is the problem. Like the school system looks like a high school, but everyone looks old. Meet on the rooftop as they reconcile. Simultaneously, their privates don't stop rambling for them to make a move on each other. Charlie clarifies that he only sees Paula as his best friend, which makes things awkward again. As he stares at her, he comments that something is different, but she simply smiles in satisfaction. The following day, Paula goes to school feeling liberated as she checks out hot guys around. She greets Marlene's group and shares how wonderful it is to be a woman. Like, she does not look like a high schooler. Look at her. That's not the, she, she is older than a high schooler. 
come in. Afterward, Marlene invites Charlie to her party, and Constantine notices her being overly friendly with the outcast. His friends tease him for being the only one uninvited, while Sarah and Leone call out Marlene for using Charlie to make Constantine jealous. But well, it definitely feels like high school. advice from Rudy since he's torn between Marlene's and Francoise's invitations. His father suggests bringing the foreign exchange student to Marlene's party, and his father's colleague agrees despite his opinion being unsolicited. On the other hand, the girl invited you while touching on your, all over your shoulder, trying to get a feel of your nipples, and you're going to go there with another girl? Interesting. Interesting thought, interesting thought process, man. And Constantine asks Paula to be his date for the party. She immediately accepts without knowing the man is using her since he wasn't invited. Meanwhile, Director Void calls Rudy into her office to remind him about the rules regarding overtime and using the employee's office as sleeping quarters. With the director's every word, the janitor shrinks in his seat, literally and in shame for being discovered. Simultaneously, Paula asks Phoebe to help her prepare for her date, while Charlie brazenly brings sister? Francoise to Mar Marlene's house without telling her that they're attending the party. As Marlene opens the door, reality sinks in for Francoise while the owner becomes hostile toward her. Francoise mockingly comments about the situation, but Charlie fails to understand her point. To eat this nigga delusional. He kind of slow. W ads. He kind of slow, bro. What the world? Is the tension, she invites him to drink, to which Willie protests knowing it won't lead them to bed her. Still, Charlie accepts, and as the night progresses, the two enjoy the dance floor while Marlene's group watches disapprovingly. Paula and Constantine finally arrive. I'm so confused. Why are they all interested in her? I mean, why are they all interested in him? Did he not, didn't he just get viral from talking to his dingling on stage and getting hard on stage? Ain't no way people are going to be like, oh, I want him. That's not how life works. Or is it? I don't know. I've never got hard on stage before. And the uninvited guest deliberately puts his arm around his date's shoulders to make Marlene jealous. Meanwhile, Hoo-Ha comments on his every move, anticipating intimacy and failing to see the man's real intentions. Paula interacts obliviously with the women and notices Charlie, but Hoo-Ha makes her focus on Constantine. They share a drink, and the tipsy Paula excuses herself to the restroom. Meanwhile, okay. Marlene disturbs Charlie and Francoise to make Constantine jealous, and after a brief silence, the ladies giggle and continue dancing with him. Concurrently, okay. Paula sobers up after hearing Leone and Sarah talking about her being a tramp. She walks away, blaming Hoo-Ha for her wreck reputation. Damn. However, she bumps into Constantine, who convinces her to speak privately, which excites Hoo-Ha. In a room, Paula talks about Charlie, but Hoo-Ha okay. keeps distracting her as it's only focused on what it'll get for the night. Her date then kisses her despite her insisting that she's not that type of woman. Imagine yo dingling did speak. So you're you're in you're in class and you got that one teacher and you're just the whole entire time go dingling speaking to you and, and then she calls on you and you said cream pie <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself bro I'm ashamed I'm ashamed he persists in advancing on her, but before they can do anything, Constantine finishes by himself, shocking Paula while disappointing Hoo-Ha. He asks his date to keep this a secret, to which Paula complies after consoling him. What did I just see? Despite her insisting that she's not that type of woman, he persists in advancing on her. But before they can do anything, Constantine finishes by himself, shocking Paula while disappointing Hoo-Ha. He asks his date to keep huh? this a secret, to which Paula complies after consoling him. Huh? Ziggy and Basti see Constantine afterward and comment about him being with Paula in the same room. Therefore, the jock boasts that something happened between them, emphasizing that the woman is a tramp. On the other hand, Paula approaches they are on Charlie and dick. tries to advise him about his liquor intake. He insults her womanhood in instead, leaving Paula heartbroken while he basks in his popularity. The following day, Marlene takes a picture of herself and Charlie on the bed as she boasts online about the previous night's events. That's so nasty. 
So nasty, bro. That's so nasty. Despite not having any memory from last night, Charlie goes with whatever Marlene says. Upon returning home, he finds his mom playing Twister with her newfound friends, worsening his headache. Soon, Charlie and Paula see Marlene's post at the same time. He goes to school afterward and is congratulated by everyone for sleeping with the hottest girl, though Francoise is mad at him. Contrary to him, men approach Paula with malice due to the rumors Constantine made. She confronts him about this, but the jock disregards her threat since no one would believe someone like her. There's While so Paula many suffers things going on, shamed, bro. Charlie hangs out with Marlene, ignoring his best friend when his supposed girlfriend insults her in front of him. <laughs> what? I just don't understand how we got to this point. Like, I, I quite literally don't understand where the turning point was. Oh, we bully him to, oh... He got hard on stage. He's the sexiest guy at school. Dap him up. Like, I don't, I don't get... Days pass and Charlie remains by Marlene's side despite the woman's obvious disgust toward him. Simultaneously, Sabine begins to feel the emptiness in the house as things go missing one by one. Voight soon finds more furniture in the employees' quarters while Paula becomes more isolated. One day, Charlie attempts to be closer to Marlene, but the woman bluntly tells him that she hates him. She then heads to the ladies' room, and Charlie immediately confides in Paula upon seeing her. However, his best you see what I'm saying? Like, what the hell is happening? You pretend to sleep with them. Is she just... Oh, she just, like, she just likes clouds. Oh, okay. Okay, she just like, she likes the clout that comes with it. This is stupid. His friend couldn't care less about him and enters the ladies' room, where she catches Constantine and Marlene being intimate. She immediately leaves, warning Charlie not to go in, but he does so anyway. This lets him overhear Marlene's confession to Constantine that nothing happened between her and Charlie. Slapped with the truth, the outcast walks away sobbing. After classes, this Rudy so releases his dumb. frustrations by dancing while cleaning, unaware that Voight is coincidentally watching. When he catches her, the director simply advises him to ignore rumors and proceed with his life as he wants. That evening, Marlene and Constantine's relationship is publicized while Charlie succumbs to self-pity. Sabine okay. checks in on him, but despite her son talking about his concerns, she rambles about her relationship with Rudy instead. Charlie angrily tells her how immature she is for not comforting her child and focusing on herself. The shocked mother walks away, but remembers to wish him luck for the final exam, which Charlie completely forgot. He crams to study that night, but ends up falling asleep on the day of the exam. Of the course. time ends, and Charlie's paper remains blank Make he fell asleep during the whole exam i yo can we can someone can we just like throw uh throw charlie in a dish or something like this this can realize how he messed up his life now that he's entirely alone that evening charlie drinks to his heart's content and tries to cut off he's Willie. going through However a midlife crisis at 18 <laughs> this is ridiculous bro oh my god her, he suddenly hears Paul is yelling. He sees her drunk and about to jump off a bridge. What so he rushes to her and overhears her arguing with Hoo-ha. This leads the best friends to realize they're in the same situation with their privates. Paula calms down and steps away from the edge. Charlie uses this chance to apologize, but the woman is still pissed that he treated her like a tramp, just like everyone else, while he got 15 minutes of fame. With that, she storms off in tears. Charlie later seeks advice from his father, and Rudy tells him that if an apology won't come, it, he has to persist in showing her how important she is. Before leaving, Charlie reminds his dad not to give up on his mom. The following day, Charlie convinces Paula to make their enemies pay during their graduation dance tomorrow. She agrees, but emphasizes that after this, they'll be done with each other, which disheartens Damn. Charlie. At the party the following evening, Charlie instructs Paula to humiliate Constantine, but she needs to convince Francoise to help. This angers Paula since she's being used again, so she orders her friend to talk to Francoise himself. They approach Francoise, and Paula prompts her best friend to apologize to the lady for tricking her into the party. Paula lightens the atmosphere by saying it's better to like women, which Francoise takes as an opportunity to clarify her preferences. The foreign woman huh? then recounts how Marlene dragged the drunk Charlie away from her on the night of the party, making Francoise feel abandoned. Despite huh? not remembering this, Charlie apologizes, so Francoise agrees to teach Constantine a lesson. She I'm getting a headache. 
I, I, I'm getting this headache and, and I feel stupid and this is pissing me off. He later entices Constantine to join her for some private time. After she unzips his pants, Paula then opens the curtains, revealing the jock on stage with his pants down. Everyone begins mocking his size while Marlene catches him attempting to cheat on her. Seeing this, the best friends feel awful as they can relate to his situation. Now y'all feel awful. I don't know why Charlie feels awful. He showed his dingling and got famous. They step on stage beside their bully while asserting that no one is supposed to be mocked since everyone has insecurities. Wait, okay, are they talking or did they just whip their private parts out? Because I, you cannot tell me he did not like he about to whip his dingling out. Their bully while assert he looked like he whipped it. I'm so fucking confused that no one is supposed to be mocked since everyone has insecurities. Francoise imitates them and encourages everyone to avoid shaming. Soon, the crowd does the same, and applause echoes in the hall. After Did they all pull down their pants? Avoid shaming. Soon, the crowd does the same, and applause what? echoes in the Hold hall. Hold up. He doesn't have pants on. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. I'm blown. I, they convinced a whole crowd of people to strip. I... <laughs> Afterward, Voight calls Charlie, who is in a celebratory mood, to inform him that he won't graduate. The party ends, and Charlie, Paula, and Francoise head out. Constantine runs after them, feeling liberated, but Paula- I swear they all took their pants off. That's what it looked like. It looked like everyone was just pulling down their pants. Paula finishes her revenge by breaking his motorcycle's lights. Leonie and Sarah hug Marlene to comfort her, but she insults them instead. Having had enough of her attitude, the ladies return her insults before leaving her alone. Constantine later chases after Marlene to explain what happened with Francoise. Meanwhile, the foreign exchange student thanks the best friends for a fun time and invites them to share a bed. But Charlie refuses as he decides to save himself for a remarkable woman. Paula reminds Charlie... Did he just say that she's not remarkable straight to his face? Does, does, Charlie, does Charlie have a brain? Does he think at all? You watch this movie? Trent, this movie's stupid. ...of the deal, so they end their friendship. As they stare at each other, the man finally kisses his former best friend. Of course. Soon, they find we themselves this in Paula's happen. room, ready to spend their first intimate moment while Hoo-Ha and Willie can't contain their excitement. However, seconds later, Charlie is done without satisfying Paula. They do it again, but the man only lasts a second longer. Therefore, Paula instructs him on what to do, and she finally gets satisfied. The following day, Paula escorts Charlie to the door, and her family hugs her tightly, glad that she's finally in a good relationship. On the other hand, Charlie anxiously helps Rudy prepare for a date. His date knocks on the door, and the father excitedly goes to her despite his son's protests due to his mom. Charlie follows his father and discovers that the date is Sabine, so he embraces them. Soon, Paula picks up Charlie for a date, but as they drive, Willie and Hoo-Ha begin rambling in an argument, leaving the couple shocked. Subscribe to watch more. They can hear each other's privates talk to each other? Okay, yep, that was fantastic. It's not even an American movie. It, I don't... Uh...